Hey, what's up, guys? So today we'll be working with the EcoTank 2700. It has an end of service life error as indicated by the alternating flashing lights and the error message that's displayed on the computer. I'm going to show you how to get around this error message so that you can continue printing. So let's get into it. Okay, so when you do a head cleaning and or a power cleaning, the ink gets pulled from the tanks, forced through the print head to free up any clogs. Now the waste ink is then dumped into a maintenance box located at the rear of the machine or into an ink pad that's located in the bottom of the machine so it just isn't sloshing around in there, potentially damaging the parts inside. So after so many head cleanings, the printer will disable itself and prompt you to get it serviced. Now I bypassed the printer's maintenance box and connected it to a clear bottle so I could see approximately how many power cleanings it took to throw this error code. And after four power cleanings, it flushed out eight ounces of ink into the bottle before it gave the error message telling me that I need to have it serviced. So if you go over three power cleanings, I would keep an eye out for this error message in the near future. Once the error message has presented itself, we need to head to the computer so that we can clear it and continue printing. All right, so on the computer, you're gonna see this error message telling you that a part inside of your printer is at the end of its service life. Click the link below for details. Now, if you click this link below, basically what's gonna happen is it's gonna take you to the Epson website and it's gonna give you details for a one-time uh, reset of the maintenance uh, of the uh, ink pad in your printer. Uh, some printers will not allow you to do a one-time reset. Once it's done, it's done. But if you do, uh, you can click on here. You fill out this information down here and they will send you a link for a one-time reset. And I think it's good for like maybe one more cleaning or something like that and then it'll go uh, dead again. Once you've used it once, you cannot download and use it again. Uh, it's tied to the printer's uh, serial number. So once it's used once from their uh, their utilities used once, it can't be used again. So I'll go ahead and close that out. Um, again, so what you wanna do uh, first of all is make sure that your computer has the latest run times installed on it. So we're running Microsoft Windows 10 on this pr on computer. So we wanna make sure that we have the latest uh, Visual C run times available. I'll put a link in the description. It'll take you to this uh, Microsoft page where you can download them. Um, I'm running a 64-bit version of Windows. So we're gonna click on the one that says X64, but if you run a 32-bit version, you can click on this one. You have to do this first. You gotta make sure that your Visual Cs are installed on the computer or it could corrupt the file. So we'll go ahead and make sure this is installed. I'll click on here and that'll download it to either your downloads folder. I downloaded mine on my desktop, it's already here. So we'll go ahead and cancel out. If you have it, it'll save it onto your desktop or wherever you have it and you wanna run it. So when I run mine, it's gonna tell me to repair it because again, I already have it installed. If you don't, it'll have a install here instead of repair. So since we have mine already installed, we can go ahead and close. If you don't have it installed, after it installs, it'll restart the printer, uh, I'm sorry, your computer will restart and then you'll be back at this screen right here. So now that we're back at this screen, we can go ahead and close this out. A secondary message should pop up. Here it is. And uh, you can close this one out as well. So now that we have uh, those error messages closed out, we can open up our browser and go to inkchip.net. And when we go to inkchip.net, we're going to click on this second tab here that says WIC. WIC stands for Waste Ink Counters. You can see it right here. And uh, what we want to do uh, is go down here and confirm that our model is in the supported model section. Now, if you have some of the old XP series, you can use that here. I know we're doing an eco tank today, but if you have some of the older XPs, you can reset your... Uh, waste ink counter here some of the old WF series you can reset the waste ink counter here as well um, if you have some of the older stylus uh, photo series uh, the stylus photo series printers like the R 280s which we started on the R 360 R 380 um, some of the older artisans you can do here they are the artisan 1430 artisan 50 so if you have any of the older printers or if you have any of the printers that have the uh, the ink pad inside of the printer, like hard inside the printer. Um, after you reset that, you can either change you can either change that out and reset the um, the printer software here, um, 
or through the one-time thing from Epson. But if you can't use a one-time from Epson, you can use it here. All right, so down here where it says ET series, you can see uh, the 2700 is here. If you have any of the newer models, the 2720 or the 4700, they're on here as well. Um, so now that we've confirmed that these models are supported or the model that I need is supported, we can go ahead and download it. So we can click on English for our language. All right, I'm gonna save it here to my desktop. Now while that's saving, what I'm gonna do is create a folder that I can throw it in there. So when we do the installation, all the files will stay inside of that folder. So we're gonna call that Wick Reset. And we're gonna move that into our folder here. Now go into our folder, and here's our setup file here. So we're gonna go ahead and set this up. Now, also, before you uh, download that file, you need to make sure that if you have any antivirus, go ahead and dis disable it temporarily. Um, when you're downloading these files, sometimes it'll see the file as a false positive of a virus and it'll clean it. So you need to go ahead and make sure that those, uh, if you have like Norton or McAfee, I don't even know if they still make McAfee. If you have like Norton or whatever antivirus suite that you have, I don't run antivirus, but if you run antivirus suites, just make sure that you've disabled the antivirus temporarily so that you can install these files. Okay, so now that the files and um, download it we need to go ahead and install it so we'll double click on the setup here and we're going to just click on yes here we'll click on yes and it's going to ask you where you want to install it normally you can just install it in program files that's fine but again i like to keep everything a little bit more tidy for when i uninstall this everything's in one spot so i'm going to change this to that wick reset file the, uh, folder that we created i'm going to click ok now when it extract, extracts it's going to extract it there so we'll go back to our reset file and you can see it now has three files in here. The setup, the actual application and an icon file. Now to also throw these uh, shortcuts on your desktop, I don't do shortcuts on my desktop so I'm gonna head delete those now. And it'll also throw shortcuts in your program files, uh, in your start menu. So uh, we'll go ahead and delete those as well but we'll do that after. So we're going from Wick Reset, we're gonna double click on here, and then we're gonna double click on the actual uh, application here. So we'll double click that. Now your printer has to be connected to your computer via the USB cable. It will not work over the Wi-Fi or through a um, Epson Direct Print or something like that. It has to be connected to the printer via a USB cable. All right, so we go to Waste Ink Counters here. And we're gonna go to this drop down menu here and look for our printer. Uh, it's the only one connected to the printer right now. So we'll click on ET2700. And we're gonna read our waste ink counter. Now this is gonna give you the information on the ink uh, counter. And the uh, also give you insight of the how much uh, ink is inside of the maintenance box or the, the waste ink pad. Now this one has been uh, completely used up. So it's at 100% it needs to be reset so we can go ahead and close this out and go back to inkchip.net and we need to purchase a key at this point now uh, in most cases most people only need one keys but if you're doing uh, mass repairs or if you're refurbing printers you can get three or five at a discount so we're gonna go ahead and click on one key click on buy and it's gonna take you to this uh, checkout card here. Now, once you get to the checkout, if you apply the coupon code Gorilla, of course, you can save 10% of the checkout and it'll take it from $9.99 to $8.99. Proceed to checkout. And once you finish checking out, it's going to send you a email. And this is what that email is gonna look like. It's gonna tell you, first of all, to make sure you have your visual C++. Uh, redistributable package installed we've already done that and it's going to tell you to install the wiki reset utility we've already done that and then it's going to give you your code here so we're going to take this code and copy it 
I'm not worried about anybody taking this code. They they're um, tied to your printer's serial number, so you can try to use this. It won't work. So we'll go ahead and copy this, and then when we go back to our waste ink counter again, 100%. So we need to reset it. So we go to we reset waste ink counter, and it's going to ask for our key. So we're going to paste our key in here, and we're going to click OK. Now what's happening is telling you that it's done to restart the printer in order to finish the counter reset process. So what we'll do is go ahead and turn the printer off. All right, and then we'll turn the printer back on. Okay, so the printer passed its self-test. And now we need to go ahead and just close this out. And then we can click on waste ink counter again. And as you can see, the counter reset to 1.13% and the counter is okay now. So now, as you can see, if we go back to our printers. Let's see, manage printing preferences. Maintenance, Epson status monitor. All right, so now it's just saying that it's busy because it's still doing its power on test, but we don't have any more of the error messages on the printer right now. And here in a second, it should tell me that everything is good to go here. Okay, now you can see as it uh, finished up its self test, um, it actually did a, a head cleaning on its own when it started up. But as you can see, it's ready to print now. And of course, if we go back to check our waste ink counter, it's still at 1.19%. So we're good to go there. So now uh, we don't have any error messages on the printer. We don't have any error messages on the computer. So we're good to go here. Now, if you want, you can keep this on here. Um, but I like to uninstall stuff when I'm done with it. Um, so I, it's just not there. Um, so what you can do, again, you find where you install this at, because it doesn't have an uninstall. It's the only, that's the only thing I don't like about this program. It doesn't have a just a universal uninstall where it goes through and files all of its files. Um, so what I can do here is just go to your WIC reset folder that you had on your desktop, and you can just delete it. All the files are kind of right there in that in that one application. Also, um, the shortcuts in your start menu, if you right click on one of them, click on more, uh, uh, hover over more, and then hover uh, over file lo open file location, select it. It's gonna go to your start menus here. So we can just select all of the ones that say ink chip space wick select all of them and we can just hold down shift hit delete and those will delete all of the shortcuts from your start menu so when you go back to your start menu now you don't see the ink chip wick reset here and it's totally gone from your printer and you're good to go so um that's how you can get back up and printing if you have a um error message telling you that you have a part in your printer at the end of its service life so we reset the waste ink counter to get the printer working again, but you'll still want to replace your maintenance box like we did here or fit an external waste tank to keep the waste ink from further saturating the ink pad. Hope you guys liked the video. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, you can uh, ask them down in the comment section below. Hopefully I can answer them for you. If you have an issue with your actual um, reset code or having issues, with the uh, WIC Reset Utility, uh, you can contact the inkchip.net support and their um, email is on the website. I'll also put it in the uh, a link in the description as well. Okay, so thanks for watching, guys. And until next time, good luck and good night.